I have this particular bench with this particular view. It's my favorite. I've seen this view in the morning, at sunset, in the summer, in the winter, in heavy rains. I've seen it in crystal clear blue skies. And you know what never interests me more than when I see it on a gray day. So imagine this, a few months back, I'm there at my favorite spot, and it's a quintessential gray day. I mean, the perfect blend of sunlight and cloudiness. I'm there, taking in all my familiar surroundings, and suddenly, in grayness, everything seems a little bit more real, vibrant. I notice the distant boats, the ones that I always saw anchored there in the water, floating in stillness, somehow in grayness. Even from so far away, I could discern their micro shifts. It was like with each small sway, I felt them preparing for their next journey. My senses were turned on. My perception of the horizon shifted and changed. That experience became a strong metaphor for me. It reminds me to embrace grayness. Because when we locate ourselves in the gray, that's when you discover true momentum. Now, typically, gray is not a popular or favorite color. Gray refers to those murky in-between spaces in life that are tricky to navigate. Grayness is unpredictability, ambiguity, uncertainty. Gray is perplexing, which makes it kind of intimidating. The thing is, though, gray areas simply require a different kind of navigation system, rather than the black and white logic of linear routes or pre-programmed paths or fixed destinations. Grayness calls for a deeper sense of exploration and curiosity. Traveling in gray necessitates instinct, emotion, intuition. And all of the senses. My journey in grayness began years ago. In college, I was studying neuroscience and dance, but I've been dancing my whole life since I was three. In college, though, I, I became fiercely set on becoming a doctor. I did the whole pre-med routine: 8 a.m. organic chemistry labs, hospital internships, summer research, MCAT prep. The list goes on. And then, at the age of 20, I took my first flight ever. I went to study and live in Copenhagen. I immersed myself in the novelties of new culture. I tasted that sweetness of independence. And by chance, my host family owned a dance studio. I mean, talk about serendipity, right? I got to witness firsthand their tenacious, lifelong dedication to the arts. When I look back to that first trip to Europe. There wasn't one particular instant where I was like, you know what? I'm going to embrace grayness. It was rather this collection of experiences that became one overarching epiphany for me. It was a moment of rebirth. I came home truly inspired. It was difficult, but I said goodbye to medicine because I had this passion for dance that I knew I had to allow it to lead me in a different, more fuzzy direction. Eventually, grayness led me to London. <laughs> Go figure. There's a lot of gray days there. <laughs>、um, I completed my master's degree in choreography, and then after that, I spent time traveling and exploring. I've had adventures in almost 40 countries. I've lived on three continents, and all the while, I've been honing this passion for dance and these interests in immersive theater and site-specific performance and hospitality. For me. Flowing with grayness elicits a different worldview. Those crystallized definitions of success and failure—they dissolve. You're no longer motivated by perfectionism. You're not confined by any boxes or strict trajectories. You are limitless. Accepting grayness means taking a chance, disrupting even your own conventions, and carving your own path. Over time, grayness. Landed me right here in Hong Kong, and all those interests and passions—they collided quite organically. I started a production company called I Am. Now, do me a favor for a moment, including you in the back. I hope you're paying attention. 
I want you to think of an experience that deeply moved you. It could be falling in love, it could be an encounter with a stranger, it could be a film, it could be a speech, something that transports you to a different place, something that unlocked your imagination, that opened your heart, something that made you feel human. Can you think of it? For me, that's live performance. When I'm performing and connecting to an audience, I mean really connecting to an audience, I get chills. I've tried, but I honestly cannot put that feeling into words. It's magic. And it's this magic that I want to share with people. It's what drives me. It's what drives my creative vision for I Am. And as I've realized in my life experiences, magic doesn't happen with prescribed methods or black and white reasoning. You can't control it, you can't predict or plan for it. In fact, the most profound feelings and experiences can only be realized through grayness. Because if you want to feel something indescribable, you have to follow instincts, not formulas. I have this perspective in life, I try to, and I also apply it to my creative practice and process. For instance, I encourage myself and performers to improvise and be spontaneous because that breeds freedom and playfulness into every experience. Sometimes I'll have spent months working on a script or months working on a speech or months working in the studio and rehearsing to try to prepare, but nothing prepares you for that moment where you want to adapt to the energy and the mood and the context of an audience. Sometimes you have to abandon the script. Sometimes you might change the choreography. And that's okay because in doing this, it allows for this exchange between the audience and the artist to become really powerful and personal and sometimes unconventional. It allows for that spark of magic. Embracing grayness is the difference between ordinary and captivating. It's the difference between flying and soaring, flowing with grayness. It leaves room for magic, not just in performance or art, but in business, in relationships, innovation, in life. Accepting grayness means engaging in what feels meaningful to you. And through this, discovering new frontiers. I'm not trying to claim myself as an expert in embracing grayness. <laughs> I'm no stranger to self-doubt. I've faced uncomfortable challenges in gray areas in personal and professional growth. But welcoming grayness, or rather warmly greeting the enigmas and the complexities of life, it immediately flexes innate muscles of strength courage and trust, muscles that exist in everyone, not just free spirits, not just artists, they exist in everyone. So flex those muscles. Recognize and push through your fears. Trust in the present moment and embrace the unknown. Because when you do this, at least for me, you find something stronger and more gratifying than safety or comfort. I found clarity. I found my voice. I found conviction, I found myself. Accepting grayness means striving for presence, not perfection. It means appreciating the beauty and the messiness of self-transformation. It's time to acknowledge the immense value that exists in promoting a horizon not only of blue skies and crystal clear answers, but also of open-ended possibilities and that special, mysterious murkiness of grayness. Gray has infinite shades. It's elusive. Sure, it's, it's a little intimidating, but more than that, it's intriguing. Gray is exquisite because it's undefinable. Honor your instincts. Respect your intuition and your emotion. Be enthusiastically present. Be undefinable. Embrace grayness and embrace the most beautifully messy and the most unimaginably worthwhile journey you will ever know. The journey of becoming you.